think we are on episode six or seven of the Living Alone vlogs. Welcome to a new episode. Thanks to Google for sponsoring a portion of this video. I have officially been living in this apartment for a full four months. We're on the fifth month now that it's May and I'm a third of the way to living alone for the first time for a year wild stuff that is insane so much has changed i've changed anyway we'll get into that i just wanted to say hey welcome to episode five before we hop into the vlog i wanted to talk a little bit about google sustainability i think everyone including myself can all make small changes to help better the earth and with google sustainability's tools it's a lot easier to take steps towards being more sustainable and especially if you don't know where to start i know the idea of implementing more sustainable practices in your life can sometimes be a daunting task but what i have always said is that it's about making small changes don't put the pressure on yourself to be perfect with it. So I wanted to talk about some of Google sustainability's tools that I think are really cool and I think you guys will really like. First things first, Google flights. Summer is such a big travel season. So for anyone who's planning travel anytime soon, you can use this Google tool to select flights that have less emissions, which is super cool. It's very easy to use. This is such an easy thing for us to do for those of us who are traveling to even make a bit of a difference. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm this perfect example of being sustainable because I do travel and I'm not zero waste. Do what you can. If something isn't realistic for you to do, that's okay. Don't focus on what you can't do focus on what you can do. Another super cool tool that Google has is Google Maps eco-friendly routing. I drive almost every single day as I think a lot of us do. So with eco-friendly routing, you can take the most eco-friendly route to your destination. It's pretty crazy how much of an impact little things like this can make and they all add up. I'm gonna read this fact from here because I don't wanna get it wrong, but they estimate that this could save over 1 million tons of carbon emissions per year, which is the equivalent of removing over 200,000 cars from the road. And also Google set a goal to achieve net zero emissions across all of its operations and value chain by 2030 and eliminate emissions associated with its operations by running on clean energy every hour of every day by 2030. You can learn more about Google's sustainability efforts at the link in my description, definitely check Check it out. Thanks to Google for sponsoring that part of my video. Now back to my regular content. I just read today's quote. I basically have this book where for each day of the year and it's all dated, you have like a quote, a little discussion part and then a goal for today. So today's quote was holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. You are the one who gets burned. I'm obsessed with reading this. I feel like this has become one of my favorite parts of my routine is flipping to a new day, whatever day it is that I'm reading it. And I do this daily. I've been posting it on my Instagram too. Just to share, yesterday's was don't ever settle. Right there. And the description for that was, people settle because they're afraid something better won't come along. They fear they aren't good enough. You are worth exactly what you want in life, but you have to believe it or you won't attract something better. Very insightful. Another thing I just got is the five minute journal. I've had one before, but now they have it in green. It had to be done. I kind of fell off doing this for a little bit, but it is so nice to do. I am so excited to become one of those five minute journal girlies again. I forgot how fun it was. That was very enjoyable. <laughs> I think my favorite part to living alone so far has been creating my own routines and kind of, I don't know, getting to curate them in whatever works best for me. It's still very possible to do this if you live with other people, if you live with your parents, because I had a really good routine back when I lived at home, but I don't know, I feel like I, have just gotten obviously so much more independent and it's pretty crazy seeing how much I used to rely on other people for things. And I don't know, I feel like I take care of myself 
in all aspects now and sometimes that's scary because I feel like it leaves it all up to me to take care of myself and all that stuff and sometimes that is a lot but for the most part I try to look at it as a positive thing. I've been doing pretty well with this whole living alone thing. What I'm not doing well with is the amount of things that I have broken or ruined in my apartment. One of them being this lamp that is literally being held together by the grace of God through this piece of tape. I'm just waiting for the day that it snaps in half and I'm like sleeping and then I freak out because I'm like, there's an intruder or something. This is my crooked lamp that I broke. I think my new one just came in the mail. Here's to hoping that I don't break it for a second time. Before we unbox and build the new one. Oh, I love this. This super cool like geometric colored top, the matching bottoms, I'm obsessed. I love when bottoms like sit higher on the waist. This print is so cute. And I think these are high-waisted bottoms. I'm gonna wear the crap out of this. Oh yeah, this is a one piece. How fancy. <gasps> Just kidding, we have one more thing to unbox first, and that, oh my gosh. Hello. Oh, wait, this is monumental. I've never had a cowboy yet. Shut up. I am a new woman. Wait, why did I think cowboy hats would never like look good on me? It's time to turn on some country tunes. Oh. Don't think I wanna take it off. So, I'm not. Things are happening. There she is. That's nice. Okay. What am I supposed to do with this? Um. Hey guys, I almost broke my toe and I'm pretty sure my toenail is turning black and it's gonna fall off soon because I was breaking down the old lamp and like the bottom part is this like 30 pound brass plate okay it's not 30 pounds it's like 20 pound brass plate it's heavy as heck and i dropped it on my big toe and that's like my worst fear is my toenail falling off and i'm really scared because i think it's gonna fall off and if it falls off i'm gonna freak, freak out. out feet already like oh i don't whatever i don't really like feet this is disgusting this is probably one of the bigger downsides to living alone is that when you get hurt, there's no one to help you. When I sliced off my pointer finger a few months ago, there was no one to help me. When I burnt my hands on the pot holder because it was like scalding hot, there was no one to help me. And now I'm going through a toe crisis. Good morning. Yesterday, I ended up canceling any and all plans that I had because my toe was unwell. <laughs> this sounds very dramatic, but I am a dramatic person. All I really did was get a ton of computer work done. I watched Vampire Diaries for a little bit and then iced my toe for the rest of the night. I'm so sad because today I had all of these plans to do some preparation for summer. I thought that'd be really fun to just do a few things to prepare. This freaking toe injury has really put a damper on things, but today's a Sunday. I'm gonna take you through my normal little routine. It's kind of my reset day. I think this right here is my favorite part of my morning routine. I've got my ice roller, some ice lemon water. She's a little squeaky. <laughs> Got a beautiful cup of coffee. I try to drink two full glasses of water first just because, I don't know, I feel like first thing in the morning, it's probably not the best thing to just like dump coffee inside of my stomach when it's empty, so. Let's read May 8th, it 
says, sometimes it's okay to be selfish. Being selfless all the time can be detrimental to your mind and body. And then the goal for today says, do one loving thing for yourself today. Treat yourself to a massage, sleep in, or meditate. Very nice. I like that one. So I just did an unnecessary action and i think my toe might be broken this is the first time i've like looked something up for health concerns and it hasn't told me that i'm gonna die so that is positive but yeah i'm pretty disappointed one because i had exciting plans for this video like i said we we're gonna do like fun preparation for summer stuff i wanted to work out i wanted to maybe go to the farmer's market i don't think that's gonna happen though just getting some stuff done bruised toe broken toe whatever whatever she is swollen toe is not gonna stop me even if maybe it should I thought I'd reward myself with doing a little face mask I just got this one it's a clarifying clay mask which I thought would be nice life hack always do your face mask before you get into your shower so that way when you're in the shower it's really easy to take off because when you put on face masks and you take it off in the sink it just gets so messy and it's so hard for no reason i'm gonna do my sunday self-care shower that's what i like to call it I thought it'd be fun to do kind of like a four month little recap of what it's been like and the lessons I've learned since living alone this far. The first thing, it is not always glamorous and it's not always easy. I feel like moving out has always been so glamorized, especially on social media. And my expectations were so different from what my reality was when I actually moved out. And that kind of hit me like a bus just because it's always looked so fun, super easy, like it's just this very seamless process. But there's a lot of hard things about moving out, whether you're moving out alone or with people. When you're moving out for the first time, it is really scary. It's hard to take the leap. And for the first couple of weeks, I was really emotional. I didn't really know how to get a grip on my feelings. I was mourning the loss of my childhood because I was kind of like moving into this new stage because being an adult is fun and it's fun becoming an adult, but you also miss a lot of parts of your childhood. And so I was kind of coming to terms with acceptance of, okay, I'm no longer a kid, even though I have this new adult life now, which is very exciting it's still really hard to let go sometimes. That being said, usually the biggest challenges in life is when you grow the most. And I feel like this la these last four months, I have grown so much more than I ever have before. Second thing I learned, being alone doesn't mean you're lonely. I feel like when you move out, you really start to learn so much more about yourself. And especially if you live alone or even if you're living with roommates, when you don't have your parents there, it is such it's such a weird transitional period in your life. And sometimes without family there, you can feel really lonely. But what I've learned is that I can still enjoy being alone. When you're alone, that doesn't always mean you're lonely. I do get moments where I'm lonely, but usually when I'm alone, I'm thriving. I feel like that's a common misconception. And I used to think that too. I was like, oh, if you're alone, that just, that must mean you're lonely. Like anyone who's alone right now, they must be feeling so lonely, but that's not the case. Another thing I learned is that adulting is simultaneously the best and the worst thing in the world. I don't know if I need to explain that. 
but if you get it, you get it. One of the bigger things that I've learned recently is that it is completely up to you how you take care of yourself, whether that's with your eating habits, your daily routines, how much you move your body and exercise and do things that feel good. It is all up to you, which can sometimes be really scary and it's really hard when you're going through like an episode of just feeling really down. When you live by yourself and you're going through a moment of despair or moments of confusion, loneliness, sadness, it's all up to you to kind of pick yourself up and it's been the most hard thing when I'm not doing too well. I have to take care of myself. You know, there's no one that can really do that for me. On the other end of things, even though that's been the hardest thing, to cope with and figure out. It's also been the most rewarding when I get out of that like headspace. How I take care of myself is up to me. There's no one that's gonna force me to eat vegetables. There's no one who's gonna force me to work out. My mom used to always be like, you should really eat some vegetables. And now no one's here to tell me that. So it's all up to me how I take care of me, which can be really scary sometimes just because if I'm not in the best mood. Sometimes I self-sabotage and I'm like, oh, let's just, uh, you know, like sometimes it can be really hard to take care of yourself when you're just over it. But I've really been leaning into routines and daily habits that make me feel good. And it's been kind of fun to kind of curate my life in a way. This last one was probably the most surprising to me that I learned. And I've always been someone who enjoys alone time, but it's definitely different now that I live alone. I value my friendships, my relationships with people, human connections so much more than I ever thought I would. I didn't realize how much I valued spending time with the people that I love until I was alone so much. And I've always thought, oh, I couldn't be alone for forever. Like I'm fine, but it's just been crazy because if I don't make the effort to see people, call people, hang out with friends, I will not have any human connection. And when you do live by yourself, it's so important to maintain relationships with people and get human connection from somewhere. And that was definitely interesting to learn because I didn't realize how important it was to me until these last few months of living by myself. I think those have been some of my biggest takeaways from these last four months since moving out. And it's been such a roller coaster of emotions. Definitely more than I thought I was going to experience. I thought this was just gonna be a simple, easy transition. I'm gonna love it. And I do love it. There's just been a lot of learning curves and growing pains. A lot of growing pains.